So in this video, we're going to explore a uh, means by which we can change the electron beam energy from one, one clinical energy to a different cl clinical energy. So we're going to do a couple, of, look at a couple things. First, we're going to look at uh, how we do that by adjusting the, the um, accelerated beam parameters. And then we're also going to look at what this does to the, to the clinical properties of the beam. So here I have our, our, our Linux set up. I've chosen a 6MV mode, and I've, I've loaded the default parameters for the 6MV beam. Um, so a few things about the schematic we can look at, as well as the as this as the the screen showing the kind of the, the schematic of the accelerator and some of the operating parameters. There are also two other tabs over here. There's an analysis tab and a filter tab, which explore what happens to the to the to the um, to the clinical beam, and as well as uh, as what we can do to the flattening filter to uh, to adjust the clinical beam. So if we click on the analysis tab, what we see are we see some some of the uh, some profiles. So we see here a profile in the radial direction, transverse direction, and a depth dose profile. And these are the profiles that we would see if we had a water tank and measuring flat uh, measuring the, the, the profile in both the in-plane and the cross-plane direction, as well as the depth dose. We also see if we scroll down over here some of the of the properties of the Bremsstrahlung beam from the target. So this is the angular dependence of the Bremsstrahlung as a function of angle. We see that the 6 mv beam is forward directed, where the intensity is highest at zero degrees, and then drops off as we go away. And we can see the same thing here on the polar on the polar plot, where we have the highest beam intensity is at zero degrees, and then as we go away, the beam, the beam intensity drops off. So now we see one of the things we see here is that the beam profiles are not as flat as we would like for a normal clinical beam, they're a little bit, uh, they're, 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 they're a little more intense at the center than they are at the sides. So what CIMAC has is that it has the ability to design a flattening filter. So if we go and we click on the filter tab, what we can do, what we, what we see here is here that the, the radius of the flattening filter, what that, what, what, what that radius projects to at 100 centimeters, and then what the flattening filter thickness is at those, at those radiuses, and what material it's made out of. And now it gives us the ability to change change the, the, the flattening filter thickness. We can then apply a new thickness and then save that if we wanted to. So what I've done is I've done this already for our 6MV beam and I've created a new flattening filter called 6MV improved. And so we see we have some numbers that, that now change. So, uh, so what we can do is we can go back into the CIMAC screen and we can select this filter by clicking over here where the flattening filter is. And then we get a drop down menu and I'm going to now choose it change it from the default mode filter to my improved 6MV beam. So now that, that gets applied, and then when we go back into the analysis tab, what we see is a much improved 6MV beam. So this is um, so this is this is the, this is the feature of CIMAC which allows us to understand how to adjust uh, flatness by adjusting the flattening filter. But we're, all, we're also going to adjust the flatness of this beam now by adjusting the beam energy. So I'm going to go back to my 6MV tab, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this beam from a 6MV beam at the target to a 10MV beam. Uh, and we're going to then, so we'll see how to do that using by adjusting the parameters over here, and then we'll see what effect this has on our clinical beam. So in order to increase the beam energy, I want to increase the energy of the, of the accelerator coming out of the accelerator, and then I also want to match that on the bending magnet going through, going through the accelerator. So to increase it, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the RF power here, and I'm going to do that by increasing the klystron voltage. Uh, so I have a, the default 6 MV is 104 kV. I'm going to increase this now to say 108 kV. We have to do this incrementally because one of the things we don't want to do is we don't want to lose the beam. So we want to make sure that we always have a non-zero dose rate over here because if the dose rate goes to zero, what that means is that, that the electron beam is missing the target, uh, which means it's striking something other than the target, which is bad because that thing that is striking may not be able to absorb the electron beam energy and then we may damage the accelerator. But if we know that if we have a dose rate that the accelerator, the beam is always on the target and the target is made to absorb the power. So first of all, I'll go, I'll go to 108 uh, kV on the cholesterol voltage. What we have here is we have a decreased dose rate because our beam, our, we've increased the electron beam energy from the accelerator, but we haven't changed the bending magnet and so we, and so we have a lower dose rate here. <coughs> What I'm going to do though is I'm also going to make sure that our cholesterol is desaturated, and so I know that to do this we have to decrease the uh, RF drive power to the cholesterol, and we and we and we can watch the saturation by watching the RF drive power and the and the power coming out of the cholesterol. So I'm going to go from 182, and I'm going to decrease this now to say 172, and I'm going to watch the uh, RF power uh, increase. So I'm going to keep on decreasing this till we get to a saturated value of the RF drive power. So we keep on going down. So I'm going to come down quite a bit. So I'm, I'm, my power question is still increasing. 
I'm going to come down still a little, quite a bit more until I get to say a few more. So now I'm not changing very much, and so that's probably about saturated right here. So I'm going to leave that there. So now I have a low, very low dose rate, 11 centigrade per, uh, per minute. That's because my electron beam energy is now quite a bit higher than what the bending magnet is passing through. So I'm going to recover that by increasing the bending magnet current. And let's go there. So that's going to now I know I've got around a matched en uh, energy from the accelerator and the bending magnet. And my dose rate's gone back up. So I'm going to keep on going now. I have, I'm at 6.53 MeV. I'm, I'm aiming for 10. So let's keep on going to uh, to a next step. So let's increase this, say, uh, let's say, let's say let's, we'll try 112 kV. We have to repeat the klystron. So let's we'll drop this now. So we have, so we're going to go to, uh, we're going to keep on dropping this a little bit more until we get our, our, our power is maximized over here. So we have, so we're still going up. So not much of a change there. So this is probably pretty close to being saturated now. And we have our dose rate's gone back down again. So we can that we have our energy of our beams gone up. So we're going to now compensate with our bending magnet and recover our dose rate over here. So we'll keep going. Now let's do we do this incrementally because we never want to let our dose rate go to zero. Uh, and eventually we'll get to the energy that we're looking for. So we'll keep so 112. I'm going to keep going now to the next, say, next level of cholesterol power. 116. I'm going to, our, our, our power has gone up. I'm going to keep on dropping, uh, keeping peaking to the, the, um, the RF driver. So let's drop that a little bit. So now that's, that's increasing our output from the cholesterol. Still increasing a little bit, and that's probably about right. I'm going to now adjust the bending magnet to regain the dose rate. And our dose rate back up. So now we're up, up to 7.5 MeV. So we'll keep on going now. Peak our klystron. Okay, so that didn't change that a little bit very much. So now we're, our dose rate's dropped off. We need to adjust the bending magnet again. We've recovered our dose rate, and we're up to 8 MeV on the, on the accelerator, so we're getting closer. Klystron voltage is up. Now, I'm, now you see that as we increase the klystron voltage, the, the amount that we have to decrease the RF driver in order to peak it is less than before. So I'll keep peak the RF driver here. So that's still just that's increasing a little bit. Now that last bit didn't change it so much. Our dose rate has dropped off. Uh, we're at 8.5 MeV from the accelerator. We need to adjust the bending magnet current to get ourselves close to to get our dose rate back up again, so we're doing well. We're now up to 8.5 MeV. Let's go to the next step. A few more of these and we'll get to 10. Okay, that's, that's, that's more or less saturated. We have, we're going to uh, we're going to now keep going with our bending magnet. And so now we have a 9 MV beam. Next stop, we're going to go to about 100 and so let's try about 136. Peak the RF driver. And adjust the bending magnet again. So we're close. So one last try. We should probably get pretty close with the klystron. Now this klystron can only go to 140 kV. That's what's said in Simac. So we're we're getting close to the limit. We're now going to drop. We're now we're going to peak this. Now you see that as we get closer to these to the higher pulse voltages, 
you the you don't need to change the RF driver as much in order to peak it. So this is pretty close to peaked over here at 46 watts. Watts. We now have a 9.8 MV beam. I'm going to increase this a little bit in order to match that. So now we're we're going to we're pretty much at our limit here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the gun voltage in order to gain the last bit of energy for our accelerator because we're running out of question voltage. So if I go to 15 volts on the gun, our energy now is 9.93 come down to 14 volts because we have less less electrons and so they can have a higher energy so now that gives us 10.04 so we've, we've got gained a little bit more than we need to so I can increase that a little bit maybe one more and now we have with 14.4 volts we have our 10 MV beam we now have to um, match that energy because we're, 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 we're allowing 9.95 to go through so we're gonna have to decrease this a little bit sorry increase this a little bit so now we have our 10 MeV beam at the <coughs> at the accelerator and we have a dose rate of pretty good dose rate so now we've created a new a new beam we have 10 MeV um, so now what happens to our profiles or our clinical profiles so we can go back and we can look at this again on our analysis tab and when we do that what we see is we see a very different profile shape than we had before. So we have the, the beam is no longer flat. It's, got, it's quite a bit more intense at the center than it is at the sides. And that's because we're still using the same flattening filter as we had before. We still have our 6MV flattening filter. Um, and But now that flattening filter is designed for 6MV. And so now we have a 10MV beam. And so the, 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 the amount of attenuation in the 6MV flattening filter is lower than what you'd want for a 10MV beam because of the thickness of the flattening filter. So in order to 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 re recover this, we would have to have a new flattening filter designed for 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 for, for 10 MV in order to have a flat beam. So what this example also does is it shows you the relationship between beam flatness and beam energy, and there's a direct there's a direct relationship uh, uh, between these two. And if you and if you were if you wanted to, you could do an exercise where you where you plot it as a function of beam energy, what the how the beam flatness would change for a given flattening filter. So this was this concludes then our exercise on beam energy and beam energy uh, tuning uh, and how that uh, how that uh, impacts clinical beam properties, namely the beam flatness.